guys, it's Erin. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I made my spice rack. My dad helped me out a lot with this. He is an engineer and he always makes all my DIYs better. I make videos here on YouTube all about my life here in Florida with my wonderful husband, Austin. Most of my content right now is just about me trying to make our house a home and uh, hopefully having some babies soon. Okay, I'm on my kitchen counter right now, but as you can see, this is actually one of our cabinets that is beside our stove. We attached this magnetic stainless steel and then we have the jars here. So they just come off like this and then I've put these labels on them and everything, all of this was bought on Amazon. So you can recreate this just with items on Amazon and I will link everything down in the description box of this video. As you can see, I still have some room right here and I actually ordered some more jars and I have more spices and I am going to bring you guys along with me while I do those so you can see how it's done. So if you wanna do something similar to this, you can too. And I'm gonna talk about some tips and tricks and why I chose certain things and yada, yada, yada. So here's the magnet. It's a really strong magnet and I'll show you when we get into it in a second. And then these are actually inserts that my dad 3D printed. I looked forever online for inserts like this that would fit inside a jar and not be a plastic thing that goes over the top, you know, like a whole lid. Could not find one to save my life. My dad has a 3D printer because he's just that kind of guy. He's actually gonna send me over the program so that I can custom figure out how many holes and how big I want them and everything because this is a little too many holes, especially for garlic powder or something like that. But we're gonna go over how I made these exactly. So let's go. I'm grabbing my computer because I did take some price comparison notes if you are curious about buying these outright. Um, at some places that are pretty popular with buying magnetic spice jars. If you're wondering, I'm like not this short usually. I'm in a complete straddle power stance here. These are the strongest magnets I have ever encountered. You have to be really careful when you're handling them. See, look, if you have one and you bring it next to something that is magnetic, it will fly at you in stab you in the hand, okay? So I'm telling you, please handle with care. If you are a child, please don't do this. Um, so these are the magnets and then these are the jars. And these I believe were actually marketed as candle jars. Just says amber glass jars, eight ounce for candle making. So this is great because it holds a whole cup, eight ounce, that's a cup, right? Alexa, how many ounces is in a cup? One cup is eight fluid ounces. Yes, it is. My dad really helped me out with this project. Where I was looking to buy online was really pricey. Now the place that I was initially looking at was nice, nice, nice spice, nice spice with a G. That's basically what they do are uh, magnetic spice racks. And they come in this really cool hexagon shape, which I thought was genius and you could fit more together, yada, yada, yada. And then when I showed that to my dad, he already right off the bat noted a few issues with this. First of all, with the shape, how the heck are you supposed to get your fingers in between anything and actually pull out the spices? Um, another thing that my stepmom brought up was that if you use clear jars, you could have an issue with your spices deteriorating fast. Faster. So we really looked for some amber jars like these so that the sunlight isn't hitting them super hard. That might not be a big deal for you, but for me, I knew I was putting them in a really bright area right next to a window and my living room kitchen area gets a lot of light. So I knew that I wanted to get them like this. Another thing I noticed right away with the spices or the, uh, the ones online from Nice Spice was they were really expensive and the jars were not this big. They were pretty small. Even the bigger size holds a heaping half a cup, 
These hold um, pretty much a whole cup, which is nice. And they're a really nice size. They're not too big, they're not too small. Um, and now what's great with these is we can buy our spices in bulk and then just put them in here. So now we don't have to use as much waste with buying plastic containers and all of that. All right, I can't squat anymore. You are now sitting on top of our hurricane supply box of butter popcorn. So before I start filling these, I am going to give these a quick wash and let them dry. So while those are drying, let's sit down and take a look at these crazy magnets. It's really hard to pull these apart, so you might need help if you are struggling with that. I find it's easiest if you like slide them off and then when you get them apart, separate them as fast as possible. What I've been doing is I usually just put this big thing back and then move it far away. These are about 15 bucks each and they come in a pack of 10. The stainless steel sheet that we actually got was 50 bucks. I know that sounds really expensive, but this is a pretty big sheet. The reason why we went with this is even with these being $15 each, the metal sheet being that much money, and then the glass jars, they were 12 for 25. I wanted 24 glass jars instead of 12, so we had to get two sets of those, three sets of magnet, they only come in 10s, and then the stainless steel, my dad helped cut, and he drilled the holes. So if you are going to DIY something like this, it's really hard to find stainless steel magnetic sheets like that for cheap. It's really hard to find custom sizes. Even if you wanna buy one off of Nice Spice, you can buy just the sheets from them, but even those are pretty expensive and they have lots of different sizes and stuff like that. But with everything that I bought, it was about 150 bucks to make that and buy everything else that I bought that we're gonna be using today. The DIY magnetic spice rack, 24 large empty jars, the one that includes the plate from Nice Spice was still more money, it was 170 bucks. So I still ended up saving money doing it this way, doing a DIY. I don't have the weird hexagon shape, which I think I'll like better in the long run. I have the bigger jars, I have the amber jars, which uh, so my spices won't deteriorate as fast. And yeah, I think it just looks nicer having the amber jars and then just having my own labels. And I will link the label maker down in the description box too. That was about 10 bucks. Okay, now that my jars are all dry, I am going to go ahead and fill them with spices. This is actually how we were storing all our spices before. So this used to just go up on our little open pantry shelves and it doesn't look that great. So here, I'll talk you guys through it with this ground ginger. So I'm just going to put it in the jar. This is going to be rinsed out and recycled. Got my label maker and I'm just going to bust out ground ginger. Okay, so I have all of my labels now. So let's think about this. This is upright for me. So when I have it like that, probably want it to be facing the same way. So I'm just gonna kind of line it up. Ground ginger. And then we'll go ahead and put one on this side also. So now we have our labels on. Everything is straight the way we want it. Everything's lining up. All right, demon magnets. Let's go. So I'm gonna make sure there's nothing else that's metal around that can fly at me. Tops are away. So to do this, I'm just going to slide it off. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't do it. Okay, so the way we set this up, this is lined up with this. When we put this on, we are going to put it, so here's the top, and we are going to put this right here, lined up with the top. And you don't want it all the way here because it needs room to uh, actually screw on, so you're gonna pull it down a little bit. And if you want, and I'm probably gonna do this, I just haven't done it yet, is you can put a little dab of hot glue. Now I'm pretty much all done. So now when I screw this on, I know the top of the magnet's gonna be here, 
and this is the top on the bottom. So let me show you why we did that. So when we put this on, if this is really full, like here, the garlic powder really full, if the magnet was at the bottom, it would be a lot easier for this to just fall off. But since it's at the top, it's a little bit harder to pull this off. And you can test it for yourself to see what um, feels the sturdiest for you but uh, it really just makes more sense to put it near the top and then put a little dab of hot glue so that it doesn't slide around. A couple more details about this plate is we have screws in the corners and then a couple here and then so six in the middle. So boom, 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 boom. And I will put the dimensions of this on the screen right now if you care. I mean, that's really gonna be dependent on your space if you decide to make this too. I do wanna show you guys these really cool inserts that my dad made though. He made this little thing that has magnets on the back so it just sticks up with my uh, jars and this is how I pull this off. So I just go like that. Like I said, this is completely unnecessary. You don't need this. Like I said, I could not find anything like this online, which is why I asked my dad to make them for me with his magic 3D printer. I'm like trying to convince him to sell these because I told him, I was like, there is a gap in the market, okay? I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these and then we will see how it looks. video i hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up and uh don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos of mine i'll see you guys next time bye